Hi guys, this is gsnom.com and I'm here with a review of the Sony Xperia XA2. We've already reviewed the Sony Xperia XZ2 and the Sony Xperia XA2 Ultra. And here we are with a mid-range phone, a 5.2 incher that has a flagship camera at the back. 23 megapixels, sure sounds like flagship to me. It's finally a change. The Xperia XA series had MediaTek Helio processors. Now they switch to Snapdragon, which is always good news. And typical for an Xperia XA, we have very narrow side bezels. The phone was launched earlier this year, if I remember correctly, at CES 2018. And the price tag should be around $318 right now, quite affordable. For me, it fights maybe the Asus Zenfone 4 and the Samsung Galaxy A8 and maybe the Huawei Honor phone. So let's see what the Sony Xperia XA2 can do. Design-wise, the story is familiar. You've seen Xperia XAs before. Uh, big top and bottom bezels so you can grab the phone in landscape and ultra narrow bezels on the side But the phone is now more curved. You can see that on the sides. You can see that on the back side It feels gently curved from the profile 9.7 millimeters is quite a bit 171 grams also quite a bit for a 5.2 incher as a comparison the asus zenfone 4 is a 7.7 .7 millimeter phone and 165 grams so it's both lighter and slimmer and a comparison from the predecessor the xa1 was a 5 incher with an 8 millimeter waistline and also 143 grams so this one is about 30 grams fatter and uh, about let's say 1.7 millimeters thicker than the predecessor more curved and a bit bigger uh, it feels okay in the hand so if you want one hand usage well uh, if you have a big hand you'll handle it if not you'll have a hard time reaching all the areas of the screen with your thumb the build is quite solid we're dealing with the usual package a curved glass panel at the front a uh, metal frame which seems to be covered in some sort of polycarbonate and also polycarbonate back the top and bottom are reinforced with metal for extra sturdy feel it does not feel fragile one bit and uh, sadly the buttons are a bit on the small side uh, not the comfiest in the world so unless you're really accustomed to the sony setup you'll have a hard time finding especially the power button which is too small well other than that the build is okay the phone is reasonably comfy but a bit heavy and fat for today's requirements i want to talk about the screen right now so the display i mentioned it before it's a 5.2 incher what kind well the ips lcd kind full hd resolution and on paper we are being promised guess what 500 nits of brightness the contrast ratio should be around 1300 to 1 and the actual experience will be tested right here and right now okay so here we go we have a lot of videos but this one is the core because it's our typical test video as you can see the phone is very immersive thanks to the very narrow bezels on the side which became the top and bottom in landscape we have a pretty okay brightness and a decent level of contrast not the best mind you if it's very sunny outside not the best contrast in the world and i feel that the image is slightly a bit too white for my preferences wide view angles of course and uh, aside from being a bit too white, I'm happy with the color calibration, brightness and contrast so-so. So let's see the other tests we did. You know, we usually put the screen under the microscope and rely on a lux meter to see if it's any good. And this is the pixel arrangement of the screen under the microscope, RGB stripes. And our lux meter showed us a value of, here we go, 478 lux units, which is good, just good. It's no record breaker usually 400 lux is the limit go below it it's bad go above it it's okay go past 500 it's great so 478 it may beat the asus zenfone 4 selfie pro also the sony xperia xa and the iphone 7 plus but it scores below the huawei p9 the samsung galaxy a8 2018 and the nexus 6p which is quite old nowadays now as far as the screen settings are concerned you simply have to go here and let's see what we can tweak so brightness level adaptive brightness sleep smart backlight control is also a thing uh, color gamut and contrast in case you don't like the hue i mentioned before you can tweak uh, with standard mode super vivid mode so you can maybe get rid of that white thing i mentioned font size display size system icons and that's pretty much it so overall pretty okay screen aside from that white thing and maybe a bit of the contrast of course, the screen is also very immersive, as I mentioned before. Now, let's go to the other hardware. When I say other hardware, I mean the CPU. It's quite a good one, a Qualcomm Snapdragon 630 octa-core, the same one from the Zenfone 4, and uh, it's a change from the Helio P20 of the predecessor. 
and uh, we also have 3 gigabytes of ram available here 32 gigabytes of storage micro sd card slot and luckily the phone does not suffer from any sort of lag you can do a ton of updates you can do a lot of things in the background updates and uh, install apps and play music and download uh, games uh, go quickly from a game to the camera without registering any sort of lag so the good the news is good we also played games we played the game called tetran which is tetris and parkour quite nice and riptide gp renegade which is our usual benchmark game so here we go you can turn the graphics all the way up not very sure if you can play uh, player unknowns battleground on the phone i'm pretty sure you can so not sure but i have a feeling you may be able to after all, 3GB RAM, Snapdragon 630 sounds okay to me. Riptide runs like a champ. I'm looking forward to seeing the game Asphalt 9. That will be our new benchmark game in the future for future reviews. Here we go. Doing a trick. And I have to say the game looks stunning, pretty good frame rate, nice illumination, texture, shadows, aliasing and so forth. So we're happy with the game, we're happy with the day-to-day -day functioning. Now it's time to have a look at the benchmarks, so I'm going to go here and check out the screenshots. As usual, we did the, the standard tests, I'm talking about Antutu, Geekbench and so forth. So, Antutu is this one here, this is actually Antutu 6. We beat the predecessor, the Sony Xperia XA1 by very little and also the Huawei P10 Lite. At the same time, we scored below the HTC One A9 and the Asus Zenfone 3, which are not exactly youngsters. We also did the other Antutu test, you know, the newer one, Antutu 7, which should be here somewhere. It has a blue background and I always have a hard time finding it. Well, things to remember fast for the Antutu 7 is that it beats the Motorola Moto X4, but scores below the HTC U11 Life. You probably noticed that we also did the famous Geekbench, this one here, and in the multi-core subtest, I was actually shocked to see we surpassed the flagship LG G6 and also the Pixel XL and the Zenfone 4. Still, we score below the Motorola Moto Z2 Play and the Xiaomi Mi A1. When it comes to the GPU, it's all about the slingshot tests. So in slingshot, we were uh, able to surpass the Huawei Honor 8, the Samsung Galaxy A5 2017, but scored below the Nexus 6P and the LG Nexus 5X, which once again, not the youngest phones in the world. In general, we are also able to beat the Sony Xperia XA2 Ultra in some tests, the Motorola Moto X4 and the Zenfone 4, which is a bit of a compliment for a mid-ranger, which is not exactly promoted as a flagship killer, unless you count the camera. So, pretty okay benchmarks for a mid-range phone and nice day-to-day -day functioning without lag. We also did a temperature test and the result goes like this. 39.2 degrees Celsius achieved when playing the game you saw before, which is Riptide, so no overheating, but very close to that threshold. And then 33.7 degrees when running GFX Bench, a pretty intensive benchmark, so in the end, no overheating. The battery actually sounds very good on paper, 3300 mAh for this diagonal, it's gold. We also have QNovo adaptive charging, there's a stamina mode, there's quick charge 3.0, and let's see our tests. As usual, our tests involve HD video playback in a loop and a PC mark test which uh, simulates continuous usage okay so when we played video watch movies in a row we were able to achieve 14 hours and 25 minutes which is very solid it beats phones like the huawei mate 9 galaxy s7 galaxy s8 at the same time we scored below the xiaomi redmi 5 plus which we tested recently and the galaxy s7 edge in pc mark we scored 10 hours and 42 minutes which is rather good and um, let's see the result actually you don't have to believe me it's here 10 hours 42 minutes so it beats the google pixel xl and the galaxy s8 as well as the samsung galaxy a8 2018 which is probably the main rival of this handset still we score below the huawei mate 9 and the sony xperia xz1 compact one of my favorite phone favorite phones from last year other tests had to do with the charging two hours 30, 36 minutes it's reasonable a bit towards the long side and actually the equal of the Sony Xperia XZ1 Compact. Well, at least it's better than the Xperia XZ. So if you want to do charging in steps, you reach 15% in 15 minutes, 31% in 30 minutes, 62% in one hour. So basically 1% per minute is the average here. And it goes a bit slower once you get, let's say, 80% of the charging done. 
settings have to do as usual with the stamina mode so we go here and see the stamina mode which disables some of the features in the background and actually has sub levels battery time balanced and device performance you can choose whichever and ultra stamina which only lets you use these basic features only them so you can get much more juice from your battery in the end an excellent battery especially for this diagonal size now it's time to talk about the acoustics i was expecting to see stereo speakers here especially with the shape of the slit here there is no slit at the bottom so this is just an earpiece and the only music speaker is the one here at the bottom Okay, so talking about the acoustics, it's a good news that we have the speaker here because it's not very easy to cover in landscape. So even if you do that, you don't cover it completely. So the sound will get from it, get to the outer world. I would, I would have expected stereo, but we'll do what we can with the current setup. Okay, so this is the music app, the successor to the Walkman app, and it's got a bunch of settings. As usual, Sony is being very generous with the settings. We've got clear audio plus, you can optimize sound settings, we've got sound effects, we've got an equalizer, we've got genre settings, quite a few of them, uh, five custom channels, clear bass, so you can also tweak the surround from here, studio, club, concert hall, as usual, Sony offers a ton of options. Dynamic normalizer and aptX HD for your wireless playback. And that's the music app in a nutshell let's go back to it let's actually play some tunes sadly there's no more spotify integration like we saw one year ago but let's listen to the music Okay, so there was a bit of a bug there at some point, but the music continued. So my impressions were that the sound is loud and clear, got a solid bass, it can easily cover a conversation in a small room, uh, there's no vibration on the back, there's no distortion, I love the high notes and especially the guitar. We also have FM radio, which should be here somewhere, here we go, this is the FM radio. We do not get bundled headphones, sadly. And other than that, well, I guess it's time to talk about the decibels. As usual, we have a special tool. It's a decibel meter. We use it to measure the power of the speaker. So the first test is this one. We achieved 85.6 decibels at the front and the back of the phone with a special acoustic sample. This beats the Galaxy Note 8 and the LG G6 and the Xiaomi Mi 6, but at the same time scores below the LG G5, LG G4 and the Xperia XA. The first one, not the XA1. We did another test, this one involved the game Riptide from before, where we scored a more impressive 100.4 decibels. It beats Galaxy S8, iPhone 8 and Google Pixel 2 XL. It's a rather solid result, but still it remains below the Motorola Moto E4 and Xperia XA2 Ultra. So in the end, we're reasonably happy with the acoustics. We may have wanted some stereo, but I'm going to live with that. So let's do some cleaning and talk about the camera. Sony has been promoting the Xperia XA models like mid-rangers with flagship cameras. When you hear 23 megapixels, it sounds like a flagship for sure. So 23 megapixels, LED flash, Exmor RS sensor, auto hybrid focus, steady shot and 4K video. That's the back camera. The front one, 8 megapixel, you can already see the 120 degree wide angle lens, steady shot, Exmor Air, a lot of goodies. You can activate the camera app using the button here or you can press the dedicated software button the interface is totally typical if you've seen an xperia phone for the past three four years it's exactly the same i would have to say that the zoom is reasonably snappy picture taking a bit slow because you're taking a lot of megapixels here and the zoom is quite okay speed wise okay so this is the superior auto mode which detects the situation we have the manual mode with tweaks for white balance exposure iso shutter and focus Plus some extra options here, we got HDR, timer, tracking, auto capture and so forth. Videos are shot in 4K, there's HDR video, there's 60 frames per second video, so quite a few options. Plus slow motion, but not the super kind. 4K, augmented reality, panorama and that's about it. Okay, so another thing. 
selfies. Let's talk about selfies for a bit. You can actually choose between the wide angle perspective and the regular perspective and uh, superior auto will once again be efficient. Now it's time to go to the gallery and see how we did with the samples we took. So we have a huge, believe me, a huge gallery. You could get scared. There are 316 items in our gallery. Okay, so I'm going to start with the daytime capture. It was a very sunny day. It was an April day that felt like June. And these are the pics. As usual for a Sony 23 megapixel camera, we have a huge amount of details. You can pick any picture, zoom in like crazy, and you'll be very happy with the details. Pretty nice color calibration. I'm happy with the greens, the reds, the yellows. They're perfectly calibrated within the sRGB standard. And the selfies, well, I was actually impressed by the wide angle selfie. It caught a lot of details around me. And also the regular one is quite okay. Although the face feels a bit too smooth for my preference. Superb clarity for both cameras. And I would have to say that the HDR really does a nice job here. So this is the regular photo. And this is the photo with HDR, so it really does what it has to do. It uh, regulates the dynamic range properly. And clarity is once again perfect, no matter the situation and no matter how strong the powerful sun is. And a good piece of news, lately I've been playing with flagships, I've been playing with the Huawei P20 Pro, and I noticed a tendency to burn the greens. Green means trees, flowers and so forth. This one does not burn the greens, and it's a good piece of news. Sadly, I talked about the details, they're quite nice when you take the photo and zoom in on the PC. If you zoom in from the phone, you will lose some details. Okay, so we go further into the gallery and one thing I noticed, I want to get back to the selfies a bit, is the fact that somehow the front camera tends to focus more on the background than on my face. So yes, the face is quite clear, but the background is somehow clearer. I don't understand why. The same thing happened to me on the Sony Xperia X-A2 Ultra. Uh, and in the end, if you catch more sun, your face will come into focus better, but still the background is oddly focused. I wanted more focus on the face and less on the background and here it seems either even or sometimes the background is too focused. Otherwise I like the skin texture, the color, the clarity and the detail so selfies are quite okay. Maybe even a bit better than Xperia X8 Ultra. Yes I know it has two cameras but I was a bit underwhelmed there. Panorama is rather lar large 21,312 over 3520 pixels and I noticed that the phone has a bit of a struggle when it comes to focusing in close-ups of flowers so it may require three four or even five attempts to get the proper focus for a nice flower close-up but when you do the images are quite stunning and wallpaper worthy so in the end it's exactly what I was expecting from an Xperia XA phone. I would have to say it's 20% superior to the predecessor and the biggest upgrade is the color calibration. Bye bye problems with the colors. You'll be very happy with the color calibration here with the details and even with the selfies if you manage to focus properly. Other than that I have to say that uh, the wide angle capture for the selfie was very impressive. It feels like it's on par with the Motorola Moto X4 and the Samsung Galaxy A8 2018 overall and also above the Huawei P Lite and Mate Lite phones. At the indoors shots, as you can see we also did some shots indoors during the launch event of a TV set, Samsung QLED and I have to say that here the uh, brighter areas, the, one that are, the ones that are lit by artificial lighting will be strangely blurry so keep that in mind if you're trying to do some indoor shots. We're done with the day and the interior capture. Let's go to the low light photo capture. Here I was a bit underwhelmed. There are some blue hues here. I recommend you watch the superior side, the upper side of the pictures. You'll find there some annoying blue grain. The flash kind of makes things a bit too white and street light halos are a bit huge and sometimes our captures felt slightly yellow. This thing persisted for the let's say first 50% of the shots towards the end things got better so maybe just maybe the first shots had the dirty lens something like that and here you can see the big halos but not as big as the first shots as I said before nighttime shots were a mixed bag first ones were underwhelming and grainy blue but the last ones quite solid if you're taking large landscape 16 to 9 shots you'll be happy 
with your touristic results in all the big capitals of the world. Still, I feel that it's below the Motorola Moto X4 and Galaxy A8 during the night, while during the day it was their equal. However, uh, in low light conditions, it can beat its predecessors for sure. The Xperia XA1 and XA are inferior to this one. Uh, that's a sure thing. Okay, so we are done with the photo capture. I'm reasonably pleased. There's an upgrade from the predecessor and that's basically everything that matters. On the video side, there's MP4, Full HD, 30 or 60 uh, frames per second, 30 mega per se uh, excuse me, 20 mega per second bitrate. And let's start with the captures. Okay, so there's a lot of them. Let's pace ourselves. This is the first one. This is where the colors feel a bit too vivid, almost burned because of the strong sun. If you try to zoom in, you'll see that the detail loss is uh, significant. You can see here the burn. Zoom in, lose a ton of details. The clarity was okay in general, a bit of motion blur when panning and a pretty nice exposure change in a 4K video. I actually love the 4K video. Let's try and find it. Uh, by the way, here we have a comparison of a regular video and the same scenery with HDR. People always wondered, what's the difference? What does HDR do? As you can see here, it lights up the scenery a bit too much in this situation. This is the HDR video in the exact same conditions as the video from before. Now, I promised you 4K. I'm still looking for it. I'm guessing it's this one here. Yes, indeed. You can see the small leaves of the trees falling. It's a very romantic landscape. And I have to admit, we're very close to flagship level. Excellent exposure change. Darker side to lighter side. Nice object tracking. The camera did not lose focus. So 4K is a champ. This is a pretty cheap phone, $300 and it shoots 4K. Focuses properly and even with the sun ahead, does not get into panic. There are some problems with the wind, microphone-wise, and we also tested the stabilization by simply walking around. Pretty strong stabilization, steady shot. It's no Sony Xperia XZ1 or XZ2, but stabilization is quite okay. It's superior to what we achieved on the Xperia XA1. And then we filmed with the front camera, which offers you two options, uh, regular option and wide angle option. And I have to admit, I am happier with the wide angle option. By the way, this is the wide angle option. Initially, the face was soft, but when we got to the light, check out the texture of the face. I have to say that vloggers and wannabe cinematographers would be very happy. Nice stabilization, nice color clearly focused background, clearly focused face, and somehow the regular shot, the non-wide angle one, was more underwhelming. So stick with wide angle for the face capture, and I was generally happy with the calibration here, and also some indoor videos in case you want. This is one of them. Once again, just like the photos, the lights are a bit blurred and dimmed. That's something to remember. So the best things about the filming, 4K stabilization and selfies. It's inferior to the Xperia XZ1 and XZ2 and slightly below the Galaxy A 2018, but also above the predecessor by a little, little bit. Now, if you want to see how the camera did during the night time, you also have that covered. Okay, so here we have pretty big halos for sure. Things are a bit too yellow and too blurry for my liking. I know it's a mid-range phone, but still, there were times when the Full HD videos felt like 720p or worse, 480p, and that's bad. People, that's bad for a camera that's otherwise quite good. There's flicker when walking, there's a lot of blue stuff at the top of the image, the zoom is poor, uh, sometimes you will lose a bit of focus. I would have to say this is oddly poor considering the other performances of the camera. And somehow it's darker than what we achieved with the Sony Xperia XA1 Ultra. Should have been brighter, but it's darker. So the weak point of the camera is surely low light video capture. Strong points, I would have to say selfie stabilization, 4K video and the colors. Now let's see uh, what the browser and connectivity offer. So as far as the web browser is concerned, we're dealing with Chrome here, good old Chrome. So let's access gsnrom.com. 
as you can see we're using swift key for input it's quite snappy and the buttons are pretty well spaced the browser is also quite fast in spite of the fact we got some pretty underwhelming results in some spider velamo and other browser benchmarks once again the keyboard swift key large spaces between the keys and things are pretty comfy here now this was the browser on the connectivity front we're dealing with a dual sim setup here we got the nano sim card slots lt category 4 and category 12 depending on the market and also we have a usb type c port at the bottom aside from the dual sims there's nfc google cast gps and glonass wi-fi a b g n miracast and bluetooth 5.0 FM radio and uh, that's basically everything you get here. I'm pretty sure we can also hook this phone up or you should be able to to a PlayStation joystick uh, so that may also be available. Now as far as the calls are concerned they were loud and clear and I love the noise cancelling and the deep and warm voice. We also did a bunch of tests for the connectivity. I'm talking about speed tests and I'm also talking about the LTE and Wi-Fi. So on Wi-Fi, we achieved 256 mega per second download. So yes, 256 mega per second in download on Wi-Fi and 25.7 mega per second in upload. On 4G LTE, there's 66.4 mega per second downloads and 48 mega per second uploads. I would say we're doing quite fine, even though I've seen many mid-range phones jumping past the 100 mega per second mark on 4G. If you've seen our reviews of the recent Xperia phones, you know exactly what to expect here. We got Android 8.0 Oreo. It's exactly the same experience we showed you on the Sony Xperia XA2 Ultra, only on a smaller format. So the Xperia UI is typically glossy, pretty close to the stock one. We got the notification dots on point. You can see them here. Other than that, well, the leftmost feed includes the news, the weather, whatever else you're going to be using. The home screens are also rather typical and if you keep them pressed, you'll trigger the widgets, wallpapers, themes, transitions, grid and settings. Here are the transitions. Here are the widgets, which are a combo of the stock ones and some very glossy ones provided by Sony. Wallpapers and themes, grid and settings related to auto-rotate, Google feed, icon appearance, names in docs and a couple more extra features. Okay, uh, so we showed you that. We'll see what else. So if you're doing multitasking, you got a carousel and you also have split screen so you can use Chrome, for example, at a certain point uh, while also using, let's see, this app here. So you can use your Google feed or you can go home or maybe go to the gallery and use the browser at the same time. So split screen is also an option, not only the carousel. In the drop down portion, things are kept stock notifications and quick settings pretty straightforward no problem and no complications so the settings area is pretty compact something that came with oreo we got network connection appearance apps battery display sound storage one-handed operation you can actually reduce the size of the screen like this for improved one-hand usage and a bunch of optimized apps when it comes to security there's a fingerprint scanner right here at the back side below the camera and let's see just how efficient it is so I have to warn you, the setup process is a bit on the long side, which may be annoying for some people. Okay, here we go. I'm going to have to put your finger here on the sensor a couple of times. Well, actually more than a couple. Something like 15, 20 times to get the setup going. Okay. And apparently we're done. Let's put it to the test. You just tap here and as you just saw not the fastest in the world it's not flagship fast but still reasonable speed there's also smart unlock here uh, so you can go here got smart lock you can confirm your pin and then you have the following so you can lock the device on body trusted places trusted device trusted face and voice match which you probably know from other devices something interesting is called xperia assist i actually uh, got into it got the xperia actions so you can customize scenarios for a certain time of day in a certain place you can activate certain things like do not disturb vibration wi-fi and so forth useful if you're going home at night it knows what to do what to shut down and what to start there's smart cleaner which keeps everything optimized nice to have makes the phone a bit more future proof and that's pretty much it now as far as the apps are concerned we got them all here 
and uh, I actually counted them all as I usually do, trying to see if there's a browser or not. Well, there are 40 pre-installed apps, quite a few. You got the typical ones, music, album, video, Xperia Lounge. There's Facebook, there's the Play Store, there's the Google Suite. You cannot live without it nowadays. And also we got weather, which always has a hard time finding me for some reason. Okay. And we also have augmented reality, the PlayStation app, the movie creator, sketch, and this is basically it. We have reached the end of the review for the Sony Xperia XA2. One of the best mid-rangers out there, able to compete with the Motorola Moto X4 and also the Samsung Galaxy A8 2018. I guess it's time to draw some conclusions. On the pro side, it's a comfy phone for gaming in landscape. It's got a pretty okay screen, okay performance, and a solid battery. It's got a reasonably loud speaker, lots of details in the pictures, good HDR, pretty good selfies, and also a solid 4K video capture. Great wide-angle video with the front camera, so vloggers will be happy, and also the fact it has pretty clean Android Oreo is always a big plus. Those are the pros. On the cons, it's a big and fat phone, especially for a small diagonal. The screen is a bit white at times. Uh, the charging is a bit on the long side, there's no stereo speakers and no waterproofing here. Uh, it struggles to focus in close-ups, so if you're trying to do a close-up of a flower, you may find yourself struggling a bit. Low-light video capture and also low-light photo capture, not that impressive, and the videos were sometimes a bit burned, and the zoom was underwhelming. Sometimes I have to say that the phone felt felt quite a bit above the Sony Xperia XA2 Ultra, which is a compliment, especially in the photo department. For me, it's a battery phone, gaming phone and vlogging phone on account of filming so well with a wide angle feature of the front camera. So if you're an aspiring Logan Paul or PewDiePie, this is the vlogging phone for you. It does gaming, has a good battery and takes nice selfies and nice selfie filming. But it's heavy and fat and not as good looking as the predecessor, but still immersive thanks to the narrow bezels. This is it from GSNOM.com. This has been the review of the Sony Xperia XA2 priced at around $300-$350. Bye-bye.